right now on Sports Talk. This is our weekend edition. Lakers have have a vacancy for new head coach. We'll tell you the latest. Plus, the Clippers out of the playoffs as a result of Friday night. We'll show you what's next for them. All this and more coming up on the weekend edition of Sports Talk. <clears throat> And hello, my friends. Welcome to a special weekend live edition of Sports Talk. I am, of course, Ed, your host, I'm joined by my co-host, Jesus, who will join us <clears throat> momentarily. Before we start, I just need to go over a couple things here. Um, so, as of Thursday, we decided to... Uh, remove the po- the episode that we did at Long Beach City College um, after reviewing it and getting a couple calls about the um, the voice <clears throat> and the audio. Um, I do like to give my sincere apologies. Uh, it was not our best work. After careful consideration, I decided to remove the podcast, so we will do better going forward. Also, um, I know we were supposed to have a show Friday and Saturday, but um, I was I came down with an illness. I wasn't feeling well, um, so I do apologize for not streaming sat- uh, yesterday and Friday, but uh, I am a little better. I'm still a little ill, but the show must go on. And again, I want to welcome my co-host, Jesus, who is joining us here as we work remotely today. And partner, welcome to our live edition, man. How's your weekend, man? So far, so good. There's a lot of um, a lot of sports going been going on, so it's to start off how, how about yourself how, how was yours oh it's been a little disappointing you know with with the with the season wrapping up with with sports with other seasons <clears throat> but i mean we are getting into the summer months so i'm looking forward to that but let's go ahead and get on with our weekend edition we're going to kick off with what happened on friday after losing to the denver nuggets four to one in the first round of the playoffs the Los Angeles Lakers have decided to part ways with head coach Darvin Ham. Ham spent two seasons with the Lakers with a 94 and 70 record, uh, two playoff appearances, made an appearance in the West Finals last year. This season, he led the Lakers to a 47 and 35 record, seventh in the West. They also uh, captured the inaugural in-season tournament title, but unfortunately, the season came to a frustrating end at the hands of the defending champion Denver Nuggets. Lakers lost in four or five, four to one, despite having the lead in almost every game of the series. But Laker fans spoke out, and of course the organization had enough, and they decided to part ways with Coach Ham. Uh, Lakers made a statement on Instagram on Friday, and we're going to go ahead and talk about this right now. Uh, Partner, what was your reaction? Are you surprised by this latest move? No, no, not at all. I believe we expected it. Um, we uh, talked about it a couple of times on a couple of other episodes. If people want to go back and check them out, but um, yeah, it was. Uh, I expected it. I'm, I'm pretty sure you did as well. Or what was your um take? To be honest, I um, I figured they were gonna give him at least one more, one more chance. Um. I just thought that maybe they moved too quickly in firing, but I mean, I just it's hard for me to, to answer your question. I am surprised, but shocked at the same time. I mean, you know, he's Coach Ham's a good coach. I mean, um, I heard Charles Barkley talk about this on TNT, um, defending Coach Ham and Coach Rogo, who Fred Vogel, who was um who was a coach before, um. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but I mean, it's. It, I know basketball is a business, but I mean, in business, you got to treat your employees well. I mean, I just don't think he got the fair end of the stick. I mean, there were a lot of questionable calls. People were questioning how he was handling the rotation. Um, uh, people were questioning how he would handle uh, the responsibilities as far as, you know, health-wise with LeBron James and company. Um I mean, they have they had they had a good talent. I mean, this this team won the in season tournament, and you figured that that was going to boost their confidence, which they did. I mean, they again they had a great second half run, 
Um, but then they fell short in the playoffs. They want to get in, but Denver was just a high class, you know. And I think what really got the organization really mad was the fact that they led in every series, bro. They could have won maybe two, maybe three of these games, especially with those big leads they had. I think what really hurt them the most was the game two where they had a 20-point lead and they lost on the last second shots. I mean, I think that, and then and you, and then happen for that to happen a week later to eliminate yourself to get eliminated. I just think that was a uh, uh, a black bruise to the ego of this organization. I mean, this organization is known for championships. So, I mean, to answer your question, I'm, I'm surprised, but I mean, I just I, I knew a change was coming. But I mean, did you think that they react too quickly in firing him? I don't believe so. Um, there was already, uh, I feel like there was already mixed emotions in that locker room, especially after um, that game two, you know, up by 20. But pretty much, like you mentioned, the whole series, they were pretty much up. All they had to do was, um, all they had to do was uh, close out the game pretty much in the fourth quarter, th a little bit in the third, and it would have been a different, whole different story. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. To be honest, um, had they won maybe two or three of these games and they lost either in six or seven, I just think that um, he would have stayed, partner. I think they would have given him one more year based on how the team performed. Um, but the fact that they lost in five <clears throat> and then they have big leads and then you lose it twice on the last second, um, it, it just shows that, you know, everyone is watching. You know, the Lakers are not an ownership that just hires a coach and lets them, gives them control. And then, you know, they check your performance evaluation saying, oh, yeah, he's doing a good job. No, they were watching how this team performed. And again, this team could have won two games at least, forced a game seven. Now, had they lost in seven games? Oh, yeah, he, I believe in my heart that Coach Ham would be back. He would have been back for another year. Now, how long he would stay, that's that's the question. We don't know. But I just think that they fired him based on the performance of the team. And you can just tell by the the way the team was playing. Um, I guess they didn't want him around. But here's a shocker to this, folks. A couple of hours after the announcement that was made of Darvin Ham's firing, another report came out that the Lakers have also fired the entire coaching staff. So, here's my question to you, Jesus. What are the Lakers thinking right here? Yeah, I, I didn't see that until, like, later at night, which was, uh, you can't say surprising, but um, how it's been going the last couple of years with, ever since they got Darwin Ham and that's uh, the whole assistant coaching. Uh, it's tough. I feel like them doing that, could it, could it be re rebuild season or um or LeBron could come back one two more years and they want a whole complete new staff uh, coaching staff because he didn't like uh the coaching staff he had with a uh, Darwin Ham. It could be either or. You know when you build a coaching staff, it takes time to kind of get to know everybody um, on a one on one basis because you need to be adjusted to what system this offense is going to run. With Coach Ham being fired, I, I'm guessing that the organization felt it was time to go in a new direction and try to bring a more aggressive, offensive basketball to the Lakers organization. So the fact that they fired their coaches staff like four hours after the main guy got fired, I mean, it just, it just shows that, you know, they, they're not waiting around. They want to start building and build another championship team. Of, of course, we're still on LeBron watch. He hasn't made any decisions yet. Last week, he told reporters that he's not going to think about this because he's going to take time to get his body ready because he's on the Olympic team. They got to report to training camp in Vegas in a couple months. He's already said that he's going to take time, speak to the organization. He's going to decide what he wants. He's on a one-year contract left. I believe he's on a, 70, uh, on a $75 million. Um, He has the option to leave if he wants to opt out of that final year. So do you think them doing this move by 
replacing the whole coaching staff is trying to convince LeBron stay one more year or maybe extend two more years? Yeah, and I, I personally feel like uh, LeBron uh, pretty much manages if he wants to fire that coach and that coach. He's done it in the past. So I feel like it was his decision as well with the with the team owner, like Jeannie Buss and um, Pal- Palenka. But I've been uh, – they've been uh, searching for a, pretty much a pop, couple key candidates as their next coaching staff. Which is, I personally feel like there's some great coaches out there. Here's the funny thing. We're going to get to this story next. Uh, Tyron Lou, the head coach of the Clippers, is apparently being targeted to be the next coach of the Lakers. And there's a rumor going around that the Clippers are going to try to extend his deal so he doesn't leave. So what are the chances of Coach Lou <laughs> being the uh, coach? Yeah, I was about to mention that. You just stole my whole line. Yup. Uh, so after those reports came out, that the Lakers were interested in Ty Lue. Uh, the, Le- the Clippers pretty much hours later are already talking about an extension uh, with Ty Lue so he could stay as a Clipper. But you never know. Uh, after A lot of Clipper fans don't really like uh, Ty Lue's uh, rotations these past couple of years, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, I did steal that spotlight from you. <laughs> I was two steps ahead of you, but... And he was asked about it after the the game the game six loss to um to the Mavericks on Friday, uh, which we're gonna get to next. But I mean, I believe a Redick, um, who's an ESPN analyst, according to my notes, he's also the front uh, one of the front runners to um to be the head coach of the Lakers. Like, how big of a opportunity would it be for him if they call him up and say, "Hey, come coach us." Uh, JJ Redick, I feel like he, he could be a great coach. You know, he he analyzes the game, right? I'm not sure if you uh, watched his podcast before. I I stay tuned, stay, I stay tuned to them. But I uh, JJ Redick coaching LeBron, that's a tough one. But like you said, he's a front runner up. But I don't, I can't see like, I can't see JJ Redick uh, coaching LeBron. I'll, I'll say like if they do pick him up, it's like a rebuilding. If they don't get LeBron back, I mean. Now, we know there's one person who is against firing coaches for whatever reasons, and that's Charles Barkley, who's an analyst uh, for TNT Sports for the NBA, inside the NBA. He had a, had a few choice things to say about, you know, Darvin Ham and Frank Vogel, who, who both were ex-Laker coaches. And, of course, Vogel was the one that brought the title in 2020. Partner, I want you to listen to this, and I want you to get a reaction to it, okay? So let's see if we can get that clip going. And apparently we're having some issues. Uh, one second here. We're trying to confirm. Uh, I think our guy, our audio guy is getting it ready. Part of our job, we watch all the games, and we watch all the talk shows. You know, a lot of these people on television, they're cowards because uh, they want the players to like them. They don't want to do their job which is to tell the truth. And I just want to say this about coaching. Anybody who thinks the reason the Lakers suck is because of Darwin Ham or the reason the Suns suck is because of Frank Vogel, you don't know what you're talking about. Frank Vogel is a hell of a coach. Darwin Ham is a hell of a coach trying to get his, his career started. But for all you punk idiots and jackasses on other networks, who want to be media and who want all the players to like y'all. Do your damn job. The Lakers suck, and the Suns suck because of the players. It has nothing to do with the coaches. I feel better now. Oh, <laughs> well, you can always love Charles Barkley for his honest response. What did you respond to that one, dude? <laughs> Charles Barkley will always be Charles Barkley. But, um, I mean, he's not wrong. The players didn't step it up. I, I mean, uh... Of course, your superstar stepped it, stepped it up, but uh, your other key players didn't step it up. And um, like you said, uh, if Lakers would have won or took it to game six or seven, it would have been a whole complete storylines out there of Ham possibly coming back or, you know, not uh, not him getting fired on the whole system coaching staff. Well, we know Frank Vogel is a coach of the Phoenix Suns, and unfortunately his team went down badly to the – 
Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, the Suns were one of the favorites. Excuse me. The Suns are one of the favorites to go far because of the talent they have. I mean, how how is it fair to throw Coach Vogel in there as well, knowing that Coach Ham got the axe, and I guess Sun Nation wants him fired? Is that right? Yeah, the same thing that happened with him here in L.A. is happening currently in Suns, and I believe uh, uh, there was already statements out there that Kevin Durant didn't like the role and the chemistry with the team at a point, so that's 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 tough for Vogel to go. I mean, from being a coaching LeBron and coaching KD, the top like the deadly weapons, that's a tough one for him. He is a great coach, but at a point, is he? Excuse me, partner. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, uh, to answer your question, I mean, I, I have to go with what Charles says. He, for him, I analyze his um, I analyze his um, his theory about what he said. Basically, what he's trying to say is that the players pretty much call the shots now. So I'll give you an example. Let's say Michael Jordan was being coached by, um, who can I throw out there? Greg Popovich. And, yeah, they had a successful team. They won a couple titles, but, you know, it. some say it's Michael's team. So if Michael says Popovich sucks ass, then the owner's going to say, Popovich, you suck ass. Get the hell out of here. I mean, you look at if Tom Brady says... Bill Belichick sucks. I mean, Robert Kraft can say Bill Belichick maybe sucks, but he does not suck. Or maybe he does suck. But you know what? I take that back. I won't use Belichick. I'll say Bill Parcells. Bill Parcells, he can say Bill Parcells sucks. Robert Kraft can say, yes, Bill Parcells does suck. Bill Parcells can say they want you to cook the dinner. They obviously let you let you shop for one of the groceries, which I don't know what that means, but I, I, I guess you could catch my drift on that. But, I mean, I it just sounds like now players pretty much decide who to be, who, who's the head coach instead of the general managers or the team owner or the team president. So, I mean, let me ask you this. Do you feel like it's going that way? Like players are calling the shots now? Uh, that's a uh, – I believe – like if you're at a superstar caliber like LeBron or like um KD, like uh all these veterans that are out there that are still superstars, like like those two that I mentioned, um I feel like LeBron does. He for sure has the control of everything, and I feel like in the future it could get to that point. But um, who knows with this younger generation uh coming up. Yeah, it's um, it's a very different game from what I learned. I I know that before it was head coaches, <clears throat> general managers, uh, the managers, the vice president, the president of the organization, they would have a say in it. Now it's more like you hear what the player does. I mean, I can give you both the both the pro and the con. I mean, I'll start with the pro side. I mean, if this guy's bringing you titles, he's bringing fame. Is he bringing success to an organization that was once under the rug and they're up there competing competitively year for year? I just think, um, you know, they had, they should keep it that way because it's basically obviously bringing you success. Now, let's go to the con part. Players con the shots. You can bring in a coach. You want to bring a coach you want, but the other, the, your main guy says, no, I want this coach. You both argue, and eventually, you know, they're going to side with the player because the player's the one that's bringing the work here, you know? Yeah, you're signing the dudes, but your main guy is the one that's actually bringing you the title and keeping your job, basically, and giving you extensions. So, um, it's both sides, you know, pro and con. It's just now it's more about, you know, what you've done for my organization lately or what you've done overall. So, 
does LeBron have a lot of respect in the NBA? Yeah, he, he's he's one of those all-time greats. And, you know, I hear people argue that LeBron's not the best because he had to win titles, you know, forming squads. You know, he won the titles in Miami with the big three, and then um, he brought home another title in Cleveland, and then he brought home here in L.A. But people forget that LeBron took on the – and i said this many times on the show. LeBron took on many, many squads that were superior to him. The Boston big three – the San Antonio Spurs, I mean, the Denver Nuggets, uh, the Phoenix Sun squad, Golden State Warriors, how dominant they were for 12 years. He's faced the best of the best. Even his squad wasn't enough. So, I mean, I, I don't understand why fans will say, you know, that he doesn't deserve those rings. Kobe Bryant won five titles. He won three with Shaq, and he won two with veterans. I'm not comparing both of them, but, you know, even Kobe Bryant faced the toughest of the toughest. So, I mean, I know it's kind of off topic, but, again, it's a pro and a con situation when it comes to um, what what happens here. And it's going to be tough, you know. We're going to have to wait and see what the next step, step of, the, of the Lakers is because, so far, they haven't been able to name a replacement. There's potential names out there, but, again... Um, we'll have to wait and see what happens with the Los Angeles Lakers. Again, uh, head coach fired, um, coaching staff out, and then also there's questions about the roster, which we'll talk throughout the summer. Our next topic we want to talk about is the Clippers. On Friday, the Clippers lost to the Dallas Mavericks by 13 points and have been eliminated. They lost in six. I saw this game. I thought this was going to be a game seven, but partner again, like the Lakers, they just ran out of steam in the second half. Yeah, tough break for the Clippers once again. I call it the Clippers curse. Um, pretty much uh, got to give a props to the Mavericks defensively, physically. They dominated the Clippers. I was hoping for a game seven, um, but it wasn't the case. As you've seen in the third quarter to the fourth quarter, the Clippers just couldn't get back. Like, they, they look way off. It's just a, a lot of mixed emotions as a Clipper fan. But um, it just, I think uh, the whole key, uh, them bringing Kawhi game two messed up the whole momentum in the series, even though he was out. But, um, yeah. How yeah, about yourself? I'll bring you some tissues if you need to next time I see you for class. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. <laughs> you want Kleenex or what? <laughs> yeah, Kawhi edition. <laughs> I think he needs more than that. But I, I agree with you a lot. You, you brought some interesting points. I mean, by the half time, by half time, I think they were down just two, or they were up two, and then in the third quarter, I think what did they actually fall hard in that third quarter because. They fell behind us like maybe 15. Well, here's the thing. In the beginning, they were playing sloppy, and they were down as much as 15 points or so. Then that second quarter, they got back in it. By halftime, they were up by two or down two. But the third quarter, again, they came out sloppy. And in the fourth quarter, Dallas just put it away. They just could not stop making. And by the time Clippers were making field goals, it was already too late. It was already out of hands by then. So... I mean, yeah, you're right. Putting Kwame Kwame Letter in there really hurt them because they were confused. That game one dominance was all in the past. Because these next two games, these next four, five, six games, they were a complete different ball club. Lost identity, didn't know what they were doing. They tried to throw back, throw them back in there, and and it went straight to hell. Um. They won a game after leading by 30 points to win by seven. And then, you know, having a chance to go up and then choking at home. And then you go to Dallas knowing that you have to win. They just ran out of steam again. It's like the other LA team. A second half, a second half collapse. And I've said it many times. Second half collapse. (laughs) 
Second half collapse. Thank you. <laughs> but at this point, at this point, I already know what the Clippers do with Kawhi anymore because he was the healthiest he's been in years, played 68 games the most. Whether he's load managing or full healthy through the season, it just doesn't matter at this point because every year he just gets injured in the playoffs. They restructured his contract and they're keeping him. Meanwhile, Paul George is set to become a free agent and during the week there were rumors of him signing somewhere in Florida. I mean, how badly did this like really hurt them? Do you think this had to do with them kind of like, you know, not playing expectationally high? Yeah, it could be that, but uh, there's um, I could see Paul George moving. If we sign him again, would it be uh the same contract like Kawhi? You know, new stadium, new um, a whole new thing, new uniforms. Everything, or do we just let him go? But I don't know what the Kawhi situation. He's not gonna be if he's if he's not gonna be healthy. We might have to look for somebody else. But it's that's a tough one right there. Yeah, but the problem was, um, you know, they signed him, they restructured. So if they cut him or if they trade him, you know, you're looking at the possibility of getting hit by the cap. And I just don't think that's something you want, especially when you're trying to build a championship and again pressure is going to be down there next season because they're going to be in a new area new arena um they're, they're gonna have their very own building so they're gonna have their own identity you know they're no longer going to be the, the, known as the basketball team to share the arena with the lakers no they're they're basically going to get a new arena and i mean you wonder now what's going to happen with the lakers are they going to even ask for a new arena i mean i, I there's nothing going on but you want to wonder they've been playing in, in crypto slash staple center since 1999, that's over 20 years. I mean, don't you think it's time to maybe renovate or maybe upgrade Crypto.com Arena? No, I think it's gonna stay stay like that forever. It's gonna be, it's gonna have that Madison Square Garden type of vibe, you know, out there in New York or in Brooklyn and the other stadium. This uh, the Lakers stadium it has his history in it. His history in it. I could see a little bit of um. Probably like remodeling in there, but I don't think, I don't think so. I think it's gonna stay like that, and they, they might even bring back the name Staples Center after that Crypto Arena contract is over in about six or seven years. Do we know LeBron will still be here in seven years, or is that after? <laughs> no, I can't see uh, him or Anthony Davis. Now, we mentioned after game six loss, uh, Ty Lu was speaking to the media. Um, the, they brought up the attention to him that the Lakers might target him for the new coaching position. Um, he was asked on the media, so we're going to go ahead and play what he had to say about that. That um, they're look, the, the franchise is looking to sign you to a long-term extension. Do you expect her to be here long-term? I hope so. You know, I hope so, like... You know, I didn't come here to bounce around, you know, go all over the place. And, you know, Mr. Bomber, you know, Lawrence, Mark, Trent, um, Gillian, they've all been great to me. You know, and this is where I want to be. And hopefully they feel the same way, you know. And so, um, no better, you know, I have had a better experience, you know, since I've been here. Mr. Bomber showed me a lot of different things that I wouldn't be privy to if I wasn't here, you know. And Lawrence being an ex-coach who actually knows the game, who actually can talk, you know, basketball, offense and defense and understand the game. And so that's really good um, for me as well. You know, Trent Redden, who I've been with, I was in Cleveland, I won a championship with, so we have a great relationship. And Mark Hughes, <laughs> um, he actually coached me when I was in Orlando when he was with Doc, you know. And so just having a great relationship with the owner, with the front office, you know, it's, it's great. And so, you know, I would love to be here long term. Well, it sounds like he doesn't want the job. He wants to stay where he's at. So what's your response to that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I believe he wants to stay, as he mentioned. Pretty much the whole ownership from head to toe on how his uh, chemistry is with a lot of talks. And there's other uh, other part where he also mentioned that this year, 
made me a better coach. A lot more talking than I had to do in the past and a lot more meetings. I feel like he has that chemistry in that club. It's just everything outside of health for the Clippers, I think it will be a whole different story. Well, there's other names that are um, that are going around right now. Uh, ESPN's uh, Dave uh, McManum uh, has reported that Ty Lue, if we mentioned before, was a target, but it sounds like he wants to stay. Uh, Jason Kidd. I believe he's the head coach of the Dallas Mavericks. And then J.J. Redick, uh, he's to be the next player. Uh, he's among those names that are kind of going around to be the next coach of the Lakers. Um, hey, what do you what do you what would happen? Let's say if Greg Popovich were to coach the Lakers, is that even a possibility? No, I can't see it. He's a Spurs for life, you know. Popovich has um has experience in championships and he coached since Phil Jackson was the Lakers coach. So this is the longest tenure coach in San Antonio Spurs history. So you think maybe you don't think that he will try to go purple and gold for once? No, I think uh, he's going to retire as a Spurs and um, I can't see him uh, screaming. I can't picture him screaming at LeBron or Anthony Davis because he's one of those type of coaches that screams. He doesn't care. It's all about the game. It's all about the game. You know, he did. Um, he was one of those people that were kind of messing around with Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, if you remember the Shaq attack or a sh- hack a Shaq uh, from like twenty years ago. Yeah, the, the famous Shaq, uh, <laughs> Shaq, Shaq hack that some teams still use at this point, but not everybody's be- uh, getting better at free throws per cent. For those of you that don't know what hack a shack means, it just means that when Shaquille O'Neal was playing, because I guess he, he was seen as a bad free throw shooter, um, they developed this thing called hack a shack, meaning that anytime you got the ball, you would intentionally foul him. Kind of like what you're doing when you're down in the fourth quarter and trying to get free throws and get the ball back. So teams would purposely foul Shaquille O'Neal. Um, <laughs> He tried to shoot like Shaquille O'Neal. And by the way, partner, I saw your comment. Maybe you and I should have a free throw concert to see who shoots like Shaq. Yeah, maybe one day we, <laughs> maybe we could give it a try. Uh-oh. Are you sure you want to challenge me, man? Because, uh, you know, I, I can probably shoot. I can probably go maybe 100% or something like that, you know? <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, that's what that's what Hack a Shack was. Um, also, you know, when Dwight Howard was a Laker, that happened too. They did a Shaq, uh, Dwight, Shaq of Dwight or something like that when Dwight Howard was with the Lakers. He had, he had, the, uh, he had the same thing too. Talking about Dwight Howard, he made a video. I'm not sure if you've seen him begging for Gina Buss to re- uh, for the Lakers to re-sign him back. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, I don't know what the hell he was trying to prove. Like, you know, Dwight, you know, here's the thing, too. Dwight said this to the press last week. He said that, you know, that GD Buzz should have not let go of that squad uh, from the 2020 bubble season where they won that title um, because there were some caliber players there and he was part of it. So basically, he was trying to burn her for releasing, saying that, you know, LeBron might leave because of decisions like that. So, I mean,. Could Dwight Howard be right? <laughs> no, we're like seven months away from Halloween, but man, that was scary. <laughs> yeah, well, it's been, yeah, it's been pretty bad for the both LA teams once again in the NBA. It sucks, you know? We always want to see an LA team push to the to the to the furthest possible spot they can, and then other news. Um, you want to cover the the other rest of the games that went on in the NBA, real yeah, quick. We'll, 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 we'll get to the uh, NBA scoreboard in a moment, but there was a story I wanted to share with you. Um, it's not NBA; it's pretty much NFL. I want to get to that one right now. Uh, this was handed to me earlier. So remember, we were talking about Odell Beckham Jr. Oh yeah, 
that same night, I believe, uh, news broke out about him, right? Yeah, so after our show on Thursday, when we packed up and went home, we woke up the next morning, and I got a text message from an inside source saying that um, Odell Beckham deci- has signed a one-year deal with the Miami Dolphins. And the thing that got me shocking was that he took he took the deal. He basically wanted more money, but I guess after, I don't know what went through his mind, he... <laughs> He took he took money he took me- less money that than he wanted you know like I was like what in the world? No, yeah, for sure. I believe uh, he was probably like stressing out, like, oh damn, okay, I'm I'm probably like not in my prime, you know, that's a little bit too much. But he did end up in a great sp- uh, spot for that cut, you know. Because uh, with Tua and um, Tyree Kill, woo, Odell Beckham, Waddle, I believe, still is with the Dolphins. They have a nice core, and I believe I forgot who. Else. Yeah, I mean, uh, he did sign with him, but I'm pretty sure the reason he signed was because he was like saying, "Oh, me. you know." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was I was the one year, so he's he's trying to run it back like the last year, one year Raven, one year Dolphin, bouncing. He's bouncing everywhere. It's at he's pretty much at the end of his career, you know. I think he got the taste of the ring in Los Angeles. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to finish the game. He almost had a second stint with the Ravens on another championship, but they came um they came short to Taylor Swift's uh team, the Chiefs or the Swifties as. Uh, some of the media members or some of the people have uh, called him. And um, he decided to sign, but you're right, partner. He's got a squad there. And also, Jaden Ramsey's still there, so he's going to play with the next teammate. Um, I'm sure they're looking forward to reunite. They were good teammates in L- L.A. Um, but now, with this latest with this latest signing... Do you see Miami getting bumped over to a big threat in the AFC East? Yeah, for sure. They were always a threat, you know. I love the running game they used to run backs last uh, year. They were both a great runner back threat. But um, I, I just uh, got some um, news that, uh, that it was possible that Odell Beckham chose Dolphins over the Chiefs and the Bills. Well, I mean, I can see him not wanting to be a Swifty, but I mean, that probably would have been his best place because Patrick Mahomes doesn't have any receivers. You look through that whole season, he was struggling with the receiver court. They were dropping balls, especially against the Eagles on that Monday night game. So I think that would have been a good fit for him. And then Buffalo, I don't think would work because he'd be the only veteran there. Stephon Diggs is gone. (coughs) So it's a young receiver core. Yeah, hundred percent. Especially, and that cold weather in Buffalo. I doubt he wants to go out there, because in Miami, no tax. Beautiful sunny weather, but a little bit humid. But it's worth it. And the great stadium, Hard Hard Rock Stadium. I think you went for the no taxes. I mean, that's why everybody's moving to Florida nowadays. You know, because they don't want to. They don't want to. Um for those taxes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He gets the whole 8.5 to his pocket. Yeah, he doesn't have to pay Uncle Sam, so that's a good thing. Um, but I just think that um, they may be a threat in the AFC East. Buffalo, we don't know how their offense is going to be now that they made those changes, <clears throat> that they're going younger. The Jets, we don't know. We don't know how Aaron Rodgers is going to play. The Patriots might be in a rebuilding year. You know, again, Bill Belichick is gone. It's not there. So I can see the Dolphins um, taking the East, but are they strong enough to beat the Chiefs in the AFC overall? Yeah, I can see them being... Um, I'm not sure how the schedule is, if they play two two times a, a year or not. But if... Um, I could see a tight, tight uh, series or, or um, 
a close, just great battle. It's going to be a great, great game. I'll be stay tuned to that. But uh, me personally, I like the New York Jets a lot this year. I'm, I might watch other games, even though they're for sure going to premiere them all on live television networks because of Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, just to just to help you on something, they do play twice a year um, in the AFC East. So, uh, Dolphins will play the Jets, the Bills, and the Patriots twice a year. So, um, we'll see how that nice. goes. Yeah, I see a one one then, one game each. Well, the question is, can Odell stay healthy, and how will Tua do? Uh, you know, he suffered a concussion a couple of years ago, so you wonder if you know that concussion has really hurt him. Yup, a scary one that. Personally, I think they changed a couple of rules and a helmet change, new helmets because of that. So we're going to talk about Saturday now. So Saturday, the West, the Western Conference semifinal started. Uh, Timberwolves took game one, 106-99. So they lead one, one nothing. Uh, game two of that series is Monday night on TNT. Um, let me ask you really quick: Are the Nuggets or the Timberwolves a new threat in the West? Timberwolves are looking deadly. They're five and zero in the playoffs so far this year, and Anthony Edwards held the Nuggets only to 26 percent field goals in Game One, and he um he pretty much took over that game. I think he had over forty points, and um that Gobert and uh, Car Anthony Towns they pretty much stopped a lot of Jokic's uh, passes, which was pretty big. Then one more thing, the only two players under 23 years old to record back-to-back 40-point playoff games in NBA history, Anthony Edwards and one Kobe Bryant. You know, an interesting fact I figured out, too, was um, half of the USA basketball rosters, they've been eliminated in the playoffs. I mean, like half of them are gone. There's only... Only a few left. Is that right? Uh, damn. So that that's kind of, and a lot of there's been a lot of mixed takes about if LeBron's gonna play like a, his full potential at the USA, and as well as Kawhi, because I think if Kawhi plays, uh, a lot of people are gonna be mad at that. Well, you would think you know you're playing for your country. I mean, a gold medal is a big, and like accomplishment. I mean, even NBA greats won gold medals and in, in, in championships, too. So, I mean, why wouldn't you not play your full best? Last year? I mean, his last run? Last run? Yeah, this might be his last run, too, I think. I don't think he's going to do this no more after this. This might be the last one. Um, he Yeah, uh, you know, uh, after the Lakers lost that day, um, there's a lot, so much rumors broke out about, like, uh, LeBron's next step. And he, he tweeted out uh that he he's not gonna it was he's gonna spend time with his family. There's not nothing has been mentioned about his future besides his next focus is the USA game. And after that, we'll see what happens. Well, he sent the tweet out because he kept reading it every day, and I guess people were asking him. So yes. he was like, uh-huh. he, he was basically saying, you know what, I'm over this. For sure. <laughs> Yeah. So he sent out a tweet. He's saying, you know, under, I'm not saying nothing now. I'm going to do this and that, and then we'll go from there. So he pretty much shut everybody up on that. Yup. The nowadays with social media and all that rumors, it's tough. You know, you could be getting, in. yeah, like you said, it's just reading reading it everywhere you go. Now today there was a. Uh, a game seven um, in the first in the East. It was between the Magic and Cavaliers. Uh, Cleveland took it 106-94. They win the series four games to three, and they advance. And then coming up Monday tomorrow, it'll be the Pacers and Knicks. That'll be game one of that East semifinals at 4:30 our time. And then it'll be Timberwolves Nuggets game two of that series on TNT seven our time. And then Tuesday, um, the Cavaliers will take on Boston. That's their game one. And then in the other Western Conference semis, it's going to be Thunder Mavericks game one. So that's the one I'm looking forward to, actually, of, of the four. 
Yeah, that one's gonna be a, a nice one, a nice competitive. I, I feel like, like there's gonna be a lot of physical scrambling type in that game. But I love. I'm looking forward to the rest of the Nuggets and Timberwolves. They're both great defensive teams, but yesterday Timberwolves just dominated at the Nuggets Arena at their high altitude, over 750 average winning percentage at home record. That's correct. And now let's go ahead and go around on of today's scores. We'll start with baseball. Pirates beat the Rockies 5-3. Yankees beat Tigers 5-2. Nationals beat the Blue Jays 11-8. Angels continue to struggle. They lose in Cleveland 4-1. Uh, Rays beat the Mets in 10-7-6. Uh, Red Sox beat the Twins 9-2. Mariners beat the Astros 5-4. Houston continues to struggle, which a lot of us are happy. Uh, Rangers beat the Royals 3-2-10. White Sox take the Cardinals 5-1. Cubs shut out the Brewers 5-0. Marlins destroy the Athletics 12-3. The Dodgers uh, beat the Braves 5-1. Orioles beat the Reds 11-1. Padres lose 11-4 to Arizona. And in the Sunday night game, uh, Phillies beat the Giants 5-4. Uh, NASCAR, this race just ended a while ago. Um, the race was in the rain delay, so it started late. Uh, Kyle Larson... Number five of the Hendrick Motorsport Chevy uh, takes another win. He wins today's race in Kansas Speed. Um, to hockey, the Stars beat the Golden Knights 2-1. That is going to a seven-game series. Um, and then the Rangers beat the Hurricanes 4-3. That's in the second round. They take the first one. And then that's some UFC action. Uh, we'll start in, uh, in the flight weight. Um, it looks like Alexandre Pantoja beat Steve Ursic by unanimous decision. And then in the batting weight, um, it looks like uh, Jose Aldo beats Jonathan Martinez unanimous decision. And the light heavyweight, Anthony Smith, scores a victory over Victor Petrino. And in the middleweight, it is um, Michael Pereira Brazil who beats Ahor Portera with a submission and those are some of the um headlines or some of the scores actually uh no uh, we'll go to soccer um colorado beats nycfc 2-0 and the galaxy and seattle ends in a nil nil tie yeah for the major league soccer league mls and um uh, uh i'm not sure if you've seen the canelo fight which was going viral all over social media. I think it was a more hyper than um, this UFC event that was pay-per-view as well in Brazil. Uh, tell us more about the Canelo fight. Who won? Well, obviously, we know who won, but how did he win? Oh, it was. It started off uh, back. Uh, uh, it started off great, man. The whole match, it was a uh, back and forth. One, two, one, two, until that fourth round, Canelo knocked out Jamie by a great uppercut in the middle that had his whole eyes rolled back in his head, but he, he got back up. But I give him props to Jamie for the first three rounds, which were his best. But after that, Canelo just had too much power. His power was insane. You, you just see um, him pu punching and him blocking, even him blocking he he got two steps back instead of going forward. So Canelo's power was pretty much the difference in that twelfth round unanimous decision uh, for the Canelo Alvarez. And uh, let's talk about the UFL real quick. Um, from Saturday, we had the Stallions beat the Showboats, thirty nine twenty one. St. Louis continues to win. They beat the Roughnecks twenty two to eight. Today there were two matchups. The Renegades lose to the Panthers 28-27. And the Defenders beat the San Antonio Brahmas 18-12, which that one was on Fox earlier this afternoon. Um, we go to the standings right now. Uh, Birmingham is the first team in the inaugural season to clinch a playoff berth. They are 6-0 in the USFL division. Michigan behind them at 4-2. Uh, Memphis, Houston, both at one and five. Into the XFL conference, St. Louis hosts a one-game lead at five and one. 
Uh, San Antonio four and two, DC three and three, and Arlington is the only one this team at zero and six. Two of the hottest teams right now, partner, is the uh, Birmingham and St. Louis. Birmingham six straight wins, St. Louis five. Is this the potential championship matchup we might see? Yeah, we could see that for sure. They're both great teams on the defense and offensive. Uh game and uh so far they're looking great so we'll see how it plans out the rest of the season and keep in mind this is a 10 game season so after 10 games the playoff starts and we'll go over the playoff rules as we get close but here's one i want to talk about this xfl ufl thing so we know that this was brought back in 2020 we had a team here in la um it was going okay but then we all know the the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Um, I believe the XFL came back uh, last season on tw in 2023. You know, they did okay. You know, a lot of the games were interesting. And now this year, they merged with the UFL because the USFL was doing their own thing. They wanted to boost ratings, kind of put themselves out there. So The Rock, the owner of the XFL, and then the UFL officials decided to merge together to become the UFL, which is United Football League. Um, so, so far, uh, six games in the season. Ratings, quite impressive, to be honest. I've seen the ratings here on this, and, you know, it's averaging better than what it was maybe a while back. The XFL, you know, as you know, first came out in 2001 by Vince McMahon. Um, people thought it was a joke. People were making fun of it. So it lasted one season. Then it's funny, 20 years later, it comes back. And then COVID hits. And then we had to go on a three-year hiatus for it to come back. And it came back. And it was okay. And then, you know, they merged with another league. So, I mean, what do you think of this This UFL or these USFL and the XFL? You know, what do you think of this whole league? I think it's great for the... Um... For the players who didn't get a chance or didn't get a second chance, but great for the NFL as well to great to pick up the NFL's teams to pick up players who are doing great in that league. For an example, a couple of players that got signed already. Many kickers, of course, are getting signed. But we'll see how the play. I think the playoffs are very important in that league, and the NFL teams and the leagues are keeping an eye on that league as well. This might be the one league that might compete with the NFL. I mean, you think um, I know people doesn't re people don't think it's really strong enough to compete with the NFL, but do you see it possibly maybe being one of those NFL like development leagues? Yeah, I could see that. Even or even like um, them picking up a big signing could blow up um, the ratings and all that by a lot. For an example, like, um, let's just say for uh, th this didn't happen, of course, if they sign Odell Beckham Jr. in the offseason, if nobody in the NFL did, XFL picked him up, UFL, um, it would have brought a little bit hype for the audience to watch it. For me, I would have. What about you? I mean, I don't think Odell Beckham will want to play because in the XFL, it's different. If you win, you get paid. You lose, you don't get paid. I mean, it's just simple as that. Yeah, but he's a competitor. I think it was just an example, you know. It could have been any player they could sign that has a, a big name to his, uh, yeah, a big reputation to his name. We do have some news about... Excuse me. We have some news about D'Angelo Russell. So earlier this week, he was fined $25,000 for verbally abusing the ref following the game five loss to the Denver Nuggets. Are you surprised that he faced a fine for that? Not at all, because when you get those fines... It's because you really said something personally or 
very, very appropriate. And knowing D'Angelo Russell, he had that bad game that game, so I for sure seen it coming. Now, this actually happened near the end of the winning shot, and I guess he was complaining of something or he was upset about something. I mean, do you really think that he handled it the right way or was it pretty much his emotions got caught up to him? Both emotion, most mostly emotions. Cause last game of the, of the season, he better get eliminated. He he felt like he got fouled, but he did it. It didn't look like it, and uh, just a uh, a little bit of everything. Do you think there's a line that we cannot cross when it comes to? I guess pretty much um, getting off about maybe uh, how the game ended by any chance. I th I think yeah, there's a certain um, there's a certain level to it, you know, because I'm not sure um, if you heard uh, about Jeff. You know who's Jeff Teague? Yes, I believe so. <laughs> So in his rookie year, he was converted by a ref because um there was a couple people sitting in courtside, and the people sitting in courtside was Jeff Teague's the player's family, but the ref was was saying um inappropriate stuff, not knowing it was his family, which was his mom and sister. Then the player pretty much wanted to fight him because you know. He called him the H word, the S word, a little bit of everything. So, at that point, you know, the refs, I, I, the refs do talk back to you, and I, sometimes they they pass the line as well. But it's hard. Uh, they get the they're supposed to be professional as well. I, I I get it, but at times like that, stuff like that, yeah, of course you gotta, and your emotions kick in. You got to you gotta let it out. You know, it kind of reminds me of uh, of the. Uh, you ever watched that documentary called America's Game? No, I haven't. Uh, is it about uh, what sport? Is it about? So this is with the NFL, the NFL Network's documentary series. So this basically uh, talks about the team that won the Super Bowl. You know, they talk about it in their eyes. And I remember, uh, I think Tampa Bay Bucks um, coach John Gruden. Um, he was the Buccaneers coach, and at the time, his brother, um, his brother Jay Gruden, was um, a quarterback um, of the Arena Football League. Uh, I forgot the name of the team. I think it was like the Orlando something, and his brother was kind of like getting roughed up, and. Um, um, <laughs> it's funny, he's like heckling the rest because, you know, Gruden likes to heckle the rest, especially when he was with the Raiders and the Bucks. Yeah. But I yeah. think, um, we have a clip from America's game. Um, let's see if, you know, if you guys understand what I'm saying. For us and playing for the Predators, and I love going to those games. racing faster during those games than it is during our games. Well, we seen it on the field, and I guess, uh, you know, it's funny when you watch that part, you know, his wife is actually next to him, and when um when he, when he called the ref a effing moron, I think his wife turned around and got offended <laughs> by that, but, I mean, have you ever seen that, have you seen, you ever heard of fans getting... Yeah, for sure, uh, been in the stands when, uh, when fans heckle at the players, and 
besides his alum, is one other family members or close relative. It's not expected, you know? I don't think his wife expected him to kind of like use that language, you know? Especially when he's saying, hey, you know what? <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, I'll tell you a, a, a funny story, though. So it was during the Rams Super Bowl. It was a Super Bowl 56. Um, <clears throat> and... Um, in the second half, the Bengals scored a touchdown, but the problem was, I think it was Jamar Chase, right? The Bengals receiver, Jamar Chase? Right, wide receiver. So he he was against Jalen Ramsey at the time, and Chase got away and took it like 70-plus yards, and I think that was the first score of the second half. But then when you look at the replay, and I think I remember Al Michaels saying this, Jamar Chase got away with a face mask hold on Jalen Ramsey. Oh, yeah. I, I seen that one. That was a horrible come by the rest for sure. Like, oh, he's against the Rams. But, um, yeah, I for sure remember that. And it was cut on audio, right? It was on video. Like, they even showed the replay. Even the announcers. Yeah, no, for sure. Enough. But did they catch the video? Like, did they were they mic'd up or no? Actually, I think McVeigh was mic'd up, but man, I can't remember on my on my couch. I just kept saying, "Hey!" <laughs> you know? Not oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. That was many fans were. And you know, it's funny. I'm not the only one that said it because I think I had a couple people over after I said it. I went to go to the kitchen, or actually, I went to go open the door because I had pizza over. I ordered pizza. And the next thing I know, like, I kept hearing a lot of things coming out of the the lounge we were at. All I heard nothing was. You can tell they're really hardcore fans. Yeah, are passionate. Very passionate, for sure. You got to love it, though. Well, I mean, it's the Super Bowl, and I think someone, someone, uh, I think I was like, man, what's with the, what's with the, with the vocabulary? And they were like, it's the Super Bowl. It's the Super Bowl. Yeah, one of the most important games of the year in February. Most viewed as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's funny, too. We actually, the Bengals actually got karma later on because in the fourth quarter, um, that final drive, where the Rams scored, there was like seven penalties on that drive. You know, it went from pass interference, roughing the passer, a couple of helmet to helmet shots, face mask holding, and there were like three plays where we scored touchdowns and they were offsetting penalties. You know, and I was like, my heart was beating, and then finally they threw the, the quick throw to cup. I was like, man, finally it's over. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the ball don't lie. Oh, don't I? No, it does not lie. But um, this, I can't wait to see what that season comes up. And looks like we've come to the end of the weekend wrap. So we got an interesting episodes coming up this week. We're going to uh, kind of look into more on the Angel situation with Mike Trout gone. Um, Sorry to cut you off right um, yeah, my Mike Trout uh, part real quick, but... He successfully had a knee surgery this week, so that's good. Yes, he's going to be out for a determined amount of time. We don't know when he'll be back, but we will continue to monitor that. So we'll talk about that this week. Plus, we'll we'll talk about the Dodgers with their surging uh, streak as of late. Can they keep it up? And what do they need to know to do to make a championship run? <clears throat> and then we'll also talk about the playoffs and both NBA and Stanley Cup. We do want to thank you guys for tuning in to our weekend wrap up. And again, special thanks to all of you who we got to say this cannot be here without all of your support. We have gone over 400 total views for this program. And I'm proud to say we're, we're very proud. We're grateful. We want to say thank you from all of us here. You guys are great.
the lead. You guys are deserve the big credit. So before we go, partner, anything you want to say? Now, once again, I appreciate everybody for supporting Edward Sports Talk and me and listening to our podcast. Uh, keep liking, comedy, and hopefully we get some breaking news this week in sports and more. Appreciate you once again. Yes, and also a program reminder um, due to the Due to the circumstances that are going on right now, um, we're going to be having our shows this week uh, remotely. So I'll be at my home. Uh, Jesus will be at his home, and we will be doing this from our home uh, due to certain events. So keep on watching here on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and here on Podbean. We thank you so much for showing for joining us today. As we like to say in this business, another day, another, another day. podcast. That's right. So for Jesus and myself. Ed, thank you for joining on Sports Talk. We'll see you guys next time.